Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I pray that all is well with you, uh, the grace of God. I really, we all need the grace of God. And uh, I would like to talk to you about self-hatred. Uh, we were, all of us, we, people of African descent, uh, everywhere that we are on this planet, we were taught self-hatred. We were told that we are not good enough not pretty enough, not good looking enough, or uh, too dark. You know, when someone tells you, wow, you're not so bad for a, black, a dark woman. Uh, what does it do to you? You know, as if they are telling you that being black and beauty cannot go together. It's, oh, it's unusual to see a beautiful black woman. Um, I was, uh, in kindergarten in the city of Kinshasa at a French school, René Descartes, I remember being called a little negress, a little ne a negress, a negress en français, uh, in French. And um, I went back home, I was crying and uh, telling my father I was having a tantrum. He looked at me, I think I was five or six, and he, he asked me, he said, uh, are you a nigger? I said, no, I'm not. He said, okay. Are you ugly? I said, no, I'm not. He said, I find you very beautiful. Uh, you are beautiful, you are intelligent, you are smart, you are bright. You will go very far in life. And that gave me a boost, you know? I felt so good. And um, so that validated me. And um, when my, my father used to say, you need to know who you are. You need to know who you are, where you came from, who are your people. So we, they did a very good job, the both of them, both my parents, uh, teaching about our ancestors, our past, our songs, our culture. We'd go to the village and uh, sit by, uh, you know, around the fireplace and talk with people. And um, it was really good. Uh, it gave me a very good foundation, a foundation and a, a, a good, healthy, a healthy ego. Uh, I am really, I'm really grateful. Um, I'm really grateful for that because uh, I'm a mature person today, but I still have that in my head. No one can make me feel ugly or a fear because I know who I am. I am a beautiful black woman. And, um, but when I look, when, when I was in, uh, in the Congo, I've never lived in another uh, African country. When I was in the Congo, we knew about slavery. We heard about it. We knew about um, colonialism, imperialism, and neo-colonialism. I knew about all that. I knew that we had, during the colonial times, we had a women, a kind of women, a group of women, who were prostitutes and they would cater to white men. And, uh, and we had groups of black men who would submit sexually to white men, but they were not gay because they were married, had a family, but yet for favors, for a good uh, job or for, you know, to go forward in life, they would do those kind of behaviors. I heard about it and I didn't, but I was younger, so I didn't pay much attention to it. And when I came to America, I started learning about your history, the American history. There are things that they keep here that they don't want Africans to know. There are things that happened here to you, our African brothers, but in Africa, we don't know that it happened. We heard about slavery, but not to the extent that you really lived it and went through it here. And to me, it was a shock, a big shock, because I started piecing, taking elements that I didn't have to put in my understanding, because I like to understand things, I like to know. And what really hurt me the most is that self-hatred. Because when you watch TV or commercials or um, the way black people are portrayed, it's rarely, especially all the movies, 
uh, in a good positive light and uh, when i see that when i look it dawned on me i was wondering why are they showing these wrappers with so many tattoos that some of them even they are tattooed on the face okay and they are so tattooed i i wonder how do they work i mean are they normal because when you are inked like that you added so much ink another component in your blood what does it do to you that's a question um and and then when you have one musician a young he has made it he's well off um he has a good life and he presents himself a certain way so every it will give ideas and see it will sow the seed in young boys that if you want to make it i should look like that i should be like that the black if you ask me the most handsome man or the the black man is it uh, is the prototype because when god the creator was talking to adam he told he told him it is good he was talking to a black man and to a black woman so he blessed them he blessed them they are the custodian of this planet but when you have another group that comes we all heard about uh, genetics and uh, uh, mutations and uh, recessive genes and uh, when you have a group that is so wealthy and owns all the studios owns the record labels on the tv stations and if you want to have a deal you need to to talk to them and do what they will tell you to do and uh, it don't need that they want the black men to be seen in this manner but the problem is when a movie is done here in america it goes everywhere in the world every sitcom every show be it the drama uh, the dramas that we see like at 9 p.m or uh, you know what we have in prime time everything is translated in many different of the world so you could go uh, in my country we watch all the sitcoms and they're in french we understand them and we see the black man as a thug a drug dealer a tattooed oversexed he cannot think much but he's very good in bed he's very strong and that's it and that's the image that is shown and sown and given to every other person on the planet that that's how black americans are when i came um, i went to my english as second language classes they told my sister and myself be careful black people are, are very dangerous they are thieves they are thugs they are drug dealers they are pimps they are this i mean it was i think i talked to a black person after two years you know it was really when i had been an elevator and and that was at ucla so that's uh westwood you know very uh posh neighborhood but i was looking at black men like it's going to hurt me and uh, that's what we were told coming from africa and uh, so it took me a long while to engage with black people just to talk you know when i go on credit show to buy my hair product and things like that um someone wants that that mistrust someone wants to show the black man under that light or to show the black woman that she is well endowed and that's all she knows she shows her, her boobs the skirt is too short she's tattooed and long nails and fake eyelashes and this and that it's an image that is shown everywhere in the world so every time that i go back home people ask me these black americans you know someone really took a long time to create to to, to to do that but for what gain and what reason because you don't keep doing something 
without any reasons. You must have a reason. You must have a cause. Why are you doing what you're doing? And it dawned on me. When God said it is good, he was talking to a black man and a black woman. So everybody else came after. I'm talking about ethnicities and colors, uh, you know, uh, skin tones. They came after. But if we keep the black man smoking weed, tattooed, because that ink affects you, believe me. You might think that it's okay to be tattooed. No, it's not. It's not. You can only go so far. With the kind of job that I do, I'm talking about spiritual job huh, in the context of my ministry. It's only here in America that I saw pastors that are tattooed, uh, worship leaders that have tattoos. It's unbelievable. I'm, I'm wondering if they are aware of what they do in the spiritual realm. With what I do, I cannot have tattoos. It's going to be uh, a doorway through which Satan is going to come and hurt me back. So, I. Uh, that's a reality. We might not like it. We might not agree. You might call me old fashioned. I respect that. But I also know what I know. Because when I'm alone at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and the Satan come knocking at my door, I cannot tell him, hold on, I need to call my pastor, or hold on, I need to do this, hold on, I need to do that. I take care of it myself until we finish the problem. So that's why I'm so vocal about it because i've lived it in my life in my flesh there are things that we cannot do and it depends on your ministry and your calling mine i cannot do that so that's what i know but going back so those people who own studios and this and that they have a need to show the black people in this manner because everywhere else in the world we see the same sitcom we see the same movies and we see black people, black men as the rapist, the aggressor, the mean, tall, scary black men. And um, who is benefiting from that? So the reason is they do that to make us, us forget about the creator, to make us forget about our identity, about our first place. Because if you don't know that you're first, then when they will push you, you'll go last and everybody else will take your place. Look at, it's a conspiracy. Look at the way in every country of the world where you have a multi-ethnic society, everybody else on, will do everything to push the black men and black women at the bottom, and then we step on top of you. We go higher, but you stay there. There is a reason why they like to do that. Uh, the, they are gaining something by removing the real owner and by taking that place and then when you watch commercials the way we have a black man and a white woman a black man with a latina woman a black man with an asian woman and kids are mixed right very rarely do i see a black man with a black woman and when in the garden of eden when god said um when he told adam what will happen to him after the sin after the fall when he talked to Eve, he told her what will happen to her and then to the Nakash, the snake. Uh, when he talked about that enmity between her seed and his seed, when he called, he said that there will be head crushers. You will bite them at the heel, but they will crush your head. He was talking to a black man and a black woman. It's only when naturally a black man and a black woman come together that they produce a head crusher. Think about that for a minute. It's natural for us. The others, because I pray with people, many ethnicity, I, I gauge them, I pick up the spirit. They have to work at a lot. They have to fast a lot. There's something that we have that comes to us very easily that they don't have. But that's my, I'm not asking you to agree, I'm just sharing. So if you don't love yourself, if you don't, you look at in yourself in the mirror and you say, oh, I'm so black, I'm so dark, I'm ugly. Why this, why that? But how can you receive God's love? Because he created you and said it is good. But if you don't love yourself, how can you receive his love? How can you receive his love? Tell me. 
So we need to love ourselves. We need to love ourselves. We need to talk to our children. We need to validate them. We need to boost their ego in a healthy way. We need to talk to them in a healthy way. They are the prototype. They are not an afterthought. They, did, they don't come be behind. They didn't come after. They were there first. And they should love themselves the way they are. And don't think that if you are married to a white woman that it will validate you and elevate you. If you love that white woman because it's love, pure love, it happens, then good for you. But if it becomes a, a, a plan, like I want my kid to come out with good hair, I want my kid, my kid to come out with uh, that skin, they will be called mixed, they will call, be called biracial, I don't want them to be called black, I hate black men. Uh, even though you're a black man yourself, that's really sad because you hate yourself and it shows. And in the spirit, that's what you're projecting. So how can you receive God love for you? And um, we need to stop and observe. And uh, for my father, I received that validation. He pushed me. Actually, I had to turn it down because I was beginning to have a big ego, like uh, being full of myself, which is not good when you, you are serving the Lord, right? But I had that for my dad and he validated me. So I, di I didn't need a man to tell me that I was pretty. I knew I, I am beautiful. This is how God created me. I am beautiful. I am smart. I am dark with my hair, with my hips. And this is how God created me. So for my mother, I learned that it was okay for a girl to cook. She taught me how to cook. She kept telling me, you catch, you catching a man is not a problem. Holding a man is a problem. And how do you do that? You treat him like a man. A man is a man. He's the king of the castle. A man, you talk to him this way. You don't talk to him down. You don't bring him down. You help him go forward and you catch him by his stomach. So um, those are old fashioned uh, tips but they are they will work until the end of time because men will eat right and uh, yeah you could go out go to a restaurant every day but believe me there is a big difference between a home cooked meal and um, take out food you don't even know if they're giving you cats telling you that it's chicken for all we know things are becoming so weird now you know so that's what i wanted to share with you um we need to stop calling ourselves bad names, negative names, negative words. Stop insulting and belittling the black woman. You came from her. How can you hate the womb that carried you? Do you think that you are attracting blessings? Love brings, it's a give and take. I love you, you love me back. And uh, I'm your mother, I birthed you, I nurtured you, and now you're a grown man. And then you turn around, you start calling women different names that are not flattering, that are not loving. We need to stop that. It's a curse. Someone out there sat and plotted. They want to keep us in this move. And this is very, as long as we are here, we will not get what God has in store for us. And we are coming full circle. We started with the black people. We are ending with the black people. I'm very serious, people of God. Things are moving very fast. We are going to discover things. People are waking up. People are seeing and understanding things. I'm talking spiritual uh, things. The truth is coming out. The truth was hidden for centuries, but it's over. It's coming up and out. And people are going to know. More people are going to be aware and understand that this was a lie. This was the truth. And they took the truth, flipped it, and put something else on top. These are the real ones. Those are usurpers. It's here. They cannot hide it anymore. So we have to be ready. Because as we are right now, if we do not change, I'm talking about quick change, uh, very few are going to step into that next phase with God. Because Jesus himself was a black man. God, according to the book of Revelation, is a, uh, a black man. We need to love ourselves. Black men, love yourselves and love the black woman. Black woman, love yourself, Bl love the black man. Tone it down. Yes, you are beautiful, but don't overdo it. Yes, you are, but like we say in Africa, we don't eat beauty. So you can be beautiful like a mermaid. Uh, in Africa, they call her mamiwata. 
you could be beautiful like a mermaid and yet you are alone you don't have a man because your ego is too big and um, and as soon as your kids are old enough to find a job they move out and they run away from black women because of what the black mother did to them or the way you treated them i'm amazed when i see the way the number of black men that are running away from black women in america it's unbelievable we don't have that in Africa. We love our men and they love us back and they respect us. They give us that place. You know, you feel validated, you feel valued and wanted and needed, most of all. Because women need to be need, needed. We are different. We need different things. So um, technology, iPad, iPhone will not replace those values, those roles. I mean, the needs that we have, they are different needs. And uh, so we need to treat ourselves with love and love us, ourselves, first and foremost. Uh, black men to black women, black women, black men, and produce black little snake uh, head crushers. And that's how we are going to go forward collectively. We need to love ourselves. We need to protect ourselves first and foremost. Help will come from God alone. But here in this realm of ours, we need to love ourselves. That's what I wanted to share with you. Please like, subscribe, and uh, God bless you. Until next, next time.